In uh, our study of electrostatics, we often find it useful to um, create or use uh, what somebody else has created, um, this thing called an electric field diagram. And so to understand an electric field diagram, I always think about those, those bracelets that were popular a few years back that had the, the WWJD on them, except these ones would be WWASPTCD. That is, what would a small, whoops, small positive test charge do? So in these diagrams, we're going to have these little um, paths with arrows that are basically going to show the path that a small positive test charge would follow. Um, small, because we want it to uh, it basically have no inertia. So when we say small, we mean really, really small, like a mass of zero. So if we get it going in one direction, it's not going to take a little while to curve it into a different direction. It'll curve instantly. Now, if we have a real object in these um, electric fields, you know, they'll, they'll take more time to curve, of course, so the, the motion of a real object won't quite match the, uh, the electric field diagram. But uh, you know, this, this little um, um, guideline will help us to draw and help us to understand the meanings for these electric field diagrams. So let's, uh, let's try a couple of these out. Let's say that we have just a single positive charge out somewhere all by itself to begin with. And we look at what would a small positive test charge do if we placed it at some point around this uh, positive charge. Let's say we start it right here, right on top of that positive test charge. Well, or right on top of the positive charge, not the test charge. Uh, on top of the positive charge, uh, we're going to have a repelling force because they're both positives. So we have our object up on top. It's going to get pushed straight up and away from uh, our test charge, or sorry, from our, our positive charge here. If we put it below, it gets pushed away downward, and to the right, it gets pushed away to the right, and to the left, away to the left, and everywhere in between. This small positive test charge gets pushed away. Uh, what about a negative charge? If we put our test charge, say, right here, up above the, uh, uh, the negative charge, it's going to have an attractive force acting on it, because we have opposite charges, one positive and one minus negative. And so we'll get lines like this. Usually the arrows go in the middle, I don't know that I think about it, so let me correct that here. really no end to see these things, so I guess I didn't draw it all the way at the end since they continue on after that, but we should put them in the middle of what we have drawn. Uh, if we put a test charge below this, this negative charge, it would get pulled up toward the negative. If we put it to the right, it gets pulled to the left toward the negative. Put it to the left, it gets pulled to the right toward the negative, and again, everywhere in between. Okay, so these are both uh, you know, fairly simple cases for this uh, uh, these electric field diagrams. Uh, but when we get into the more complicated cases, we kind of need to have some, some general guidelines to follow. So the guidelines for drawing electric field lines, or for drawing these diagrams, um, number one, most important rule, <coughs> uh, I guess they're all pretty important here, but uh, important rule, don't cross the streams or the electric field lines. Either way, it would be bad. Uh, if we cross electric field lines, we mean what we would uh, be talking about here is that this small positive test charge would be moving in two directions at once. So if I had another field line that went like this, I put a small positive test charge there, we're saying it would move both this way and this way which doesn't make any sense, so we can't have those cross. Uh, our lines are either going to start at a positive charge, uh, so if we put a positive test charge right next to a positive charge, it's going to move away from that, so that's going to be our starting point. 
um, or they might just be coming from off the page starting at infinity like we had with that second diagram. Our lines are going to end either at a negative charge or again at infinity. This should be charged object. There we go. Uh, when we have really dense electric field lines that's going to indicate a strong electric field at that location. So if we look at these ones we see that nearby these charges, these electric field lines, they're pretty dense. Now if we just draw a, uh, uh, a shape in here like this, you know, we see we've got three electric uh, field lines passing through that. But if I draw the same shape out here, same size, we've only got one electric field line passing through that, which makes sense. As we get farther away from this negative charge, we should be getting a smaller electric field, uh, a smaller effect from this negative charge as well. So the denser these field lines are, the stronger that electric field is. And then the last one, um, the electric field is really just an arrow pointing in some direction. Um, the electric field lines, they, they may curve, they may change direction as they move um, around these objects. So um, the electric field vector is going to be just tangent to the field line at any point in space. Now, on these two diagrams, we just had straight lines for both of them, so you know, that was kind of a moot point. But with our third one down here, that won't be the case. So let's try drawing field lines for this guy. So our field lines, they either start at infinity, they start way off the page, or they start at a positive charge. So let's start one right here on the right side of the positive charge. It gets pushed away from that positive charge and it gets pulled toward this negative charge. So it's going to just take this straight little path there, going straight across. If we had one that started over here, it initially is getting pushed up this way, pushed up and to the right. Um, and uh, you know it's, it's getting pulled down and to the right by this negative charge, but it's farther away from that negative one. So you know, overall it still gets pulled to the right, but the upward part from this positive charge is bigger than the downward part from the negative charge. Those will balance when we have the distance is the same between the positive and the negative. So now the positive part at, at this point right here, the positive charge is pushing it up, the negative charge is pulling it down, and those balance each other. And so after we get closer to the negative charge, that downward force wins. And we'll have kind of a symmetry going on in most of these diagrams. So if we go a little further here, we'll see. Okay, it takes a little longer, it goes a little farther out before it comes back down. Just kind of continue on like that. Okay, now at some point we're probably going to get to, um, uh, to paths that won't necessarily go from the positive to this negative. Now, these are the only two things in the universe. Yeah, most of them will end up doing something like that. But hey, what about if we start a charge right here? And that's getting pushed away from this positive charge. It's getting pulled toward this negative one, but not as strongly. And then, so it's going to move straight away like this. And at that point, it's getting pushed away from this positive charge and pulled toward this negative, but not as strongly. So it's just going to continue moving straight out. And that one's never going to come back to this negative charge. This one goes off to infinity. We have one that matches over here. Right? If we put a charge right over here, it gets pulled straight toward this negative charge. And then as we uh, kind of go around, we start to see these charges or these paths that yeah, they, they mostly will connect in some way, shape, or form, or at least they, they appear to connect. I should put my arrows here. There we go. And something like this. Okay, so we've got our electric field lines. They all either start at infinity, like this one did, or they start at this positive charge. 
they'll either end at infinity like this one did, or they end at this negative charge. They never cross paths. They go from positive to negative. Uh, and then where they're densest, which would be this area right between the two, is where we're going to have the largest electric fields. Now, this is kind of a special case. This is uh, something called a parallel plate capacitor, which is just two plates that are parallel to each other, and they each have charges on them. One has a big positive charge on it, one has a big negative charge, and those are pretty evenly spread throughout. What we find in situations like this is that between these two plates, we basically have a uniform or a consistent electric field that pretty much just goes straight from the positive plate to the negative plate. Now outside, you know, we're going to have a little bit of uh, you know, this curving going on, yeah, maybe a lot of curving going on here, but outside these things, that electric field gets a lot weaker. And something like this. Okay, and then for the bot or for the negative, I have you know, something kind of like this. Okay, um, so what we uh, what we'll look at later on with these is just how this electric field um, affects the situation. This is actually a, uh, an electronics component that we'll use when we uh, talk about building circuits. This is a capacitor, like I said. Um, what we find on these is that the electric field is so much stronger in between these two plates than it is outside these plates that basically we, we treat outside of these plates as though it were zero electric field. It's not really, but it's it's so small that you know this is certainly the more um, a more interesting case and the more uh, or the, the the part that has a bigger effect on our problems. So that's electric field lines. As you're drawing them, just keep in mind the uh, the guidelines that we talked about here, in particular the the idea of not crossing field lines. That's so important. That's one that I see people make uh, make mistakes on all the time as they have these field lines crossing paths with each other, which just doesn't make sense when we know what the electric field line means.